Thank you very much, David. Thank you for that great presentation. Let me uh, share my screen now, bring that up. And let me do the slideshow. So hello, everybody. My name is Tomas Nuno. I'm an assistant research professor at the, at the University of Arizona. I'm in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics, so I'm an epidemiologist by training. Uh, my main area of research is chronic disease prevention. So for me, if we can prevent things before they happen, that's the ultimate. Uh, so my talk here is called Healthy Eating and Healthy Aging. Um, and I'll start with the first part. I set it up as a true-false question. So this myth buster is a true-false question. So the question is, you have to restrict your eating to lose weight. True or false? And I'll give about uh, 20, 30 seconds or so. So, It looks like we just about yeah, we settled into about just everybody answered. That's uh, 70 30 percent split, and I uh, definitely like that split because the answer is false. You do not have to restrict your your uh, eating to lose weight. Uh, you uh, you do have to be uh, do things, but the re main reason why is uh, you you when you when you restrict your eating or such as skip meals or restrict or restricting your calories. You lose the nutrients from those from by skipping those meals. So you lose those important nutrients that you can get by having your meals that are important for a uh, healthy body. Yeah, the missed calories means missed energy throughout the day. So that balance of energy throughout the day, and probably most importantly, um, it confuses your metabolism. Your when you when you skip meals and you restrict your calories, your metabolism goes into a uh, it starts to change and realize it says that I'm not going to get so much food. So I really need this. I need to store this food, this little food that is coming in, and um, it actually does the reverse thing. It starts holding that weight. And so restricting your calories uh, on a on a big basis like that is, is uh, definitely false. You don't need to do that to lose weight. So I'm glad we got that split there on that answer. So my talk today is focusing on nutrition and the aging brain. There's, there's extensive evidence that supports a relationship between diet and, and brain uh, brain health. Um, the, the, the um, you know, we put the food in our body. This good, the good food is uh, good food. A uh, good diet is good for our body. And our, our brain is part of our body. Uh, and we see it's combinations of foods and nutrients, they, they may act synergistically to provide stronger benefit than just in, by individual dietary components. So it's it's the whole, the balanced meal, the different types of good foods, the acting synergistically, the nutrients coming in, rather than just trying to find that magic one pill that try, that that uh, will give us the, the function. So that, that's the beautiful thing about uh, good food and how it affects our body. There's two dietary patterns that, that have been shown to help with uh, aging, uh, with brain health as we age. The Mediter Mediterranean diet has just been associated with decreased cognitive decline and incident Alzheimer's disease. And the dietary approach to stop hypertension or DASH in initials, that pattern has neuroprotective actions. So I'm gonna list some, some of the foods that the food groups that are in both of those types of diets. And you're gonna see some similarities in, in both of these types of dietary patterns. So the Mediter Mediterranean dietary pattern, uh, several factors, olive oil as a main source of fat, fresh fruits and vegetables, legumes, nuts and seeds, whole grains, minimally processed food, frequent fish but, and red meat consumption in moderation, eggs, water for drinking, wine in moderation with meals, uh, sweets and cakes and various desserts, desserts only occasionally, uh, a moderate portion, portion size, a moderate physical activity every day, and meals in the company of others. So these are like how we do things and in Latino communities, Meals are an important part of our family events, family get-togethers. So I, I love that this, this dietary pattern recognizes that and how we can uh, have these um, um, healthy meals when we're in the company of others. The DASH dietary pattern, um, uh, the, those, some of those factors are eating vegetables, fruits, and whole grains, uh, fat-free or low-fat uh, low dairy products, fish, poultry, fish, poultry, beans, nuts, and vegetable oils. Uh, limiting foods that are high in saturated fat, such as fatty meats, full fat dairy products, and tropical oil, oils such as coconut palm and kernel oils, and limiting sugar sweetened beverages and sweets. So kind of get an idea of the, the similarities between both of these type of dietary patterns. And we might have had a general idea based on our own experiences and what we see out there and what we hear. But there's so much information there, it's hard to know. We, we, to digest all the information out there, it's nice to have these types of talks to talk about what's been seen in the research. But this is a study we've done with a group here in, in Arizona and in Mexico. You can see that the uh, a plate of a half, of a healthy meal portioned with a variety of foods 
nutritious whole foods, water, and it can, this plate contains good vegetables, fats, and carbohydrates. So you can see it's in Spanish. This is an intervention we did in, in Mexico and along the border, community health center along the border. And uh, for us, it translates very well to the picture just to me speaks a, a thousand words in Spanish and English. So half of the plate with vegetables and greens, a quarter of the plate with the proteins, a quarter of the plate with the whole grains or starches that, that are good for you, a whole fruit for, for, for a snack. And then uh, my preference, uh, water. Water has no calories and it's refreshing for us. So the, yeah, the verduras, proteínas, amidones, frutas, and bebida. This is a, what a, 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 just an example of what a well-portioned plate could look like. And for Latino communities, I think we hear a lot about um, a meat consumption tends to be big in a lot of our communities. For myself, carne asada, pollo asado, I love it. And for me, but thinking about that and having that on occasion in moderation, and like when I do have a place like this, trying to fix my, my plate like this rather than taking up the whole plate. So some examples of what, what I mentioned, good vegetables, good good fats and good carbohydrates. What are some examples of those? With vegetables, these, these are our friends. We eat, we eat vegetables, are, you can eat as much as you want of those basically, and cruciferous, especially leafy green vegetables, rich in vitamins, minerals, fiber, and phytochemicals. So vegetables are superfoods. Broccoli, spinach, lettuce, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, radish, and tomatoes, so colorful green and red. Um, and so our plates, and as the previous slide showed, half of our plate with vegetables would be a good good thing to strive for. In terms of good fats, um, monounsaturated mono, mono and polyunsaturated fats, uh, they've been shown to have decrease inflammation or reduce cholesterol levels. And some examples of those, olive, canola, and peanut and sesame oils, avocados, nuts, and fatty fish, such as salmon, salmon tuna, trout, and sardines, and lean cuts of meat, meat and eggs and protein. So again, that lean, if we do our meat eaters, I don't necessarily res say restrictor for our brain health, but in moderation and the lean cuts are the, are the best um, uh, option for ourselves. And in terms of good carbohydrates, and there, there's a lot of talk about low fat versus uh, low fat versus low carb diets. I, I tend to think of it in terms of the good fat and good carbohydrate diet. If we can do the good fat and the good carbohydrate diet, then, then we're doing the best we can for ourselves. And uh, see, these are and the good carbohydrates are high in fiber and antioxidants. So things such as whole fruit, and I put berries are the best be just because I'm also a, a, a believer in like the fruits that have, the sugar is great in them and the, the fiber fills us up, but berries just have so many valuable properties in them, antioxidants. So I love that, but you see the picture of the peaches and nectarines. I love those too. Whole grains, whole beans and vegetables, see whole beans and vegetables. So you see the, the picture of the pinto beans there and the, the, the corn tortillas. So all of these are, are, are great for our, our healthy aging and healthy brain for our healthy eating to affect our healthy brain. And then vegetables, they're so good, they even come out here under the good carbohydrates. So some concluding thoughts. I like to show this 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 uh, uh, cartoon because it shows, uh, we have some French fries, a donut, a cupcake, and a chocolate chip cookie, and, and some bacon, trying to exercise. And they're saying, well, 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 if it isn't Mr. I don't need to work out because I'm the good kind of fat. So yeah, there's that nice looking avocado. He's doing very well, huh? he's a good fat. But the other thing I like about this is that, you know, these, if you, if this, and I like to say this, when you, if you're eating these things on that are trying to exercise every day, it's going to really be, you can't out exercise that type of a diet. So if French fries and donuts and cupcakes and cookies and, and regular bacon are part of our everyday diet, then we need to rethink our diet. And that's my conclusion. That's minimizing sugar, refined carbs, processed food and fried food, minimizing the saturated fats and minimizing the saturated fat, trans fats, which is the, the pictures of all those there. And then um, I have one last myth that I, uh, just uh, I can ask Mexican food is unhealthy. We're not going to do a poll on this, but if you could think about that for a second, Mex is Mexican food unhealthy? And I would say false because it can't, it's one of those, you know, maybe it depends kind of things what you eat, but it can be very healthy if we, if we have the pinto beans, whole beans, uh, whole, whole, whole uh, brown rice, uh, whole pinto beans, uh, lean meats, eggs, the, all those things, those examples I gave earlier, can be part of the healthy Mexican food type of diet. And myself being a Mexican, uh, Mexican American uh, family from Mexico, I think about that. And, and also as mentioned earlier that uh, um, the, the Mediterranean diet and food and company of others. And I think that's a big part of our, our culture, eating and family and friends, and it should be an enjoyable experience and can be very healthy. And I just wanna say thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure to present this with you and I hope some of this information is interesting and, and hopefully helpful. Um, my next step, I'll hand it off to, uh, Christian Abudelo for the next part of the talk. And I'll stop sharing the screen. Yes.